and he's uh, delivering the opening remarks. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all in Zhengzhou, Henan for the 14th meeting of the Council of Heads of Government of Member States of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The member states and observer states of the SCO are our close neighbors. As we say in China, a close neighbor is better than a distant relative. And our neighbors as, are as close as family, and we are privileged to be your host. We very much hope that uh, you will feel warmth and hospitality on the cradle of the Chinese civilization, a place so historically and culturally significant. And uh, we also want to welcome Belarus to attend this meeting first time as the observer state. Prime Ministers of the SEO member states exchanged views on important issues concerning the development of the SEO in a candid manner. And now we can continue our discussion in accordance with the established practice. We will listen to the remarks of the SEO member states, Prime Ministers, and Secretary General of the SEO the executive uh, director of uh, RCTS, the representatives of uh, the Business Council and the Interbank Consortium, which will be followed by the remarks by the prime ministers of the observer states. In our small group discussion, we all expressed a warm welcome to the participation by Pakistan and India. Now I would like to speak on behalf of the Chinese side. Distinguished colleagues, since its inception 14 years ago, the SCO has traversed an extraordinary journey. We have increased political mutual trust and made important contribution to the well-being of member states and the stability in the region. We have signed the Treaty on Long-Term Good Neighborliness, Friendship and Cooperation, established over 50 cooperation mechanisms at multiple levels in the various fields, jointly formulated a multilateral economic and trade cooperation program and an implementation plan, and achieved good progress in cooperation across the board. In the Wufa summit this year, President Xi Jinping and other SCO leaders adopted the SCO development strategy towards 2025 charting the course for the SCO in the next 10 years and laying down a roadmap for mid to long term cooperation. The expansion of the SCO has been started and the development of the organization has entered a new phase. Currently, the world economic growth is sluggish and many countries are facing downward pressure on their economies. This has been compounded by emerging geopolitical crises in complex international and regional landscapes and the rising scourges of extremism and terrorism posing unprecedented challenges to the international community. Spanning the Eurasian continent, the SEO member states sit at the crossroads of civilizations, religions and cultures of the East and the West. Peace and stability and prosperity of the region not only concern the interests and well-being of peoples in the region, but also mean so much for peace, stability and prosperity of the world. To this end, I would like to suggest that on the basis of the three traditional cooperation areas, namely security, economy, and people-to-people -people exchanges, we do more to strengthen the six major cooperation platforms of the SCO. First, we need to build a strong platform for security cooperation. The SCO member states account for two-thirds of the total area of the Eurasian continent and the quarter of the world's population. 
This makes us a staunch force for the maintenance of peace and development of the Eurasian continent. We uphold the post-war international order, the spirit of the UN Charter, and we are committed to peaceful settlement of international disputes, the principles of mutual respect and non-interference, and building a new type of international relations featuring win-win cooperation. Given the ever more rampant international forces of terrorism and violence and the intertwining traditional and non-traditional security threats, we should conduct a closer security cooperation on the platform of the SCO, leaving no room for destabilizing forces and helping to ensure political security and social stability of various parties. It is important for the SEO member states to increase coordination and communication, implement the agreement on border control cooperation among SEO member states, work for an early conclusion of the anti-extremism convention, strengthen the anti-narcotic mandate of the SEO, and jointly support the national reconciliation process of Afghanistan, thus creating a reliable security environment for the development of the region. Second, we need to build a platform for production capacity cooperation. Being at a crucial stage of industrialization and industrial upgrading, the SEO member states face the pressing tasks of strengthening infrastructure development and improving industrial system, hence the urgent need for international cooperation on production capacity. As a Central Asian saying goes, healthy herds grow on good water and grass. The SEO member states have big potential in terms of market and resources. China is ready to synergize its own mature technology and quality production capacity with the development needs of countries in the region and provide affordable and quality equipment and project contracting services. We could also establish joint ventures to facilitate local production and processing and create more jobs for the local people and cut the cost of production. China and Kazakhstan have signed an agreement on production capacity cooperation and drawn up a list of early harvest containing 52 projects. Two projects, namely automobile assembling and polypropylene, have been started. More than 10 other projects, such as iron and steel maternity and cement, will be started soon. China is ready to share the experience of china kazakhstan cooperation within the SCO and create a internationally competitive industrial cooperation chain that benefits all parties on the basis of government guidance, independent decision-making by enterprises, and market-based operation. We could select major cooperation projects. Third, speed up the building of a platform for connectivity cooperation located along the Eurasian Continental Bridge, which is a major land transport corridor connecting Asia and Europe. SEO members boast huge potential for connectivity cooperation. When roads are built, prosperity follows. Building a regional transport network can greatly help members accelerate economic development. Going forward, we should carry out key transport projects in a planned and faith manner and work to build a Eurasian connectivity network with Central Asia as a hub. China is ready to work with other parties to ensure quality services for transit shipment among various countries. China proposes that SEO countries step up satellite navigation cooperation. China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan Railway is a signature SEO project of regional connectivity. China proposes that the three countries hold a trilateral working group meeting for in-depth discussions at an early date. Fourth, innovate the financial cooperation platform. Funding is the blood of practical cooperation. Regional economic cooperation will not be possible without flexible and e effective investment and financing arrangements. Since its inception 10 years ago, the SCO Interbank Consortium, IBC, has carried out various forms of financial cooperation, and we need to continue to leverage this mechanism. 
and China has provided 27.1 billion U.S. dollars of credit line for SCO members and step up the China-Eurasia Economic Cooperation Fund designed to help member states, observer states and dialogue partners alike, with the first batch of projects already being launched. China will also follow multilateral rules and procedures and encourage the AIIB, the BRICS New Development Bank and other institutions to actively support projects of SEO members. China will soon join the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, EBRD, and we have pledged to make contributions to the equity participation fund that EBRD plans to set up. We are also ready to harness this platform to provide investment and financing support for projects of SEO members. And it is also important to set up a SEO development bank at an appropriate time, and China hopes that this proposal can be studied at a faster pace through SEO finance ministers and central bank governors' meetings. And fifth, build the platform for regional trade cooperation. Expanding trade and promoting trade and investment liberalization and facilitation are vital to deepening regional cooperation. China has taken an active part in bilateral and multilateral free trade arrangements. So far, we have signed 14 free trade arrangements with 22 countries and regions. The combined GDP of SCO member states is nearly 13 trillion US dollars, but the trade volume among us is modest. There is much potential to be unlocked. Just now, at the SCO members' prime ministers' meetings, we agreed that we will instruct trade ministers of SCO members to study that within the WTO framework, how to take effective measures to promote SEO countries to realize more convenient trade and custom clearance. China also suggests that an SEO e-commerce union will be established as quickly as possible, as this will facilitate efficient and convenient cross-border e-commerce among companies of members. Six, build the platform for cooperation bearing on social undertakings and people's well-being. The purpose of cooperation is to generate better development, and the purpose of development is to improve people's lives. People living on the steppe say that the carpet is a dream of carpet weavers. Likewise, better mutual understanding and better life are the common dream of the big SEO family. China is ready to work with other countries to actively expand cooperation in agriculture and to ensure food security. The SEO Environmental Protection Information Platform will be officially launched and we will facilitate the implementation of the plan of Green Silk Road envoys. China will support the launch of SCO Youth Exchange Year. China will offer 20,000 government scholarships per year to other SEO members in the next five years, starting from 2016 to 17 academic year. And China will continue to step up personnel training and fulfill the target of training 2,000 talents for other member states between 2015 and 2017. China proposes that countries along the Silk Road advance tourism cooperation and promote personnel exchange as an important pillar and adopt more convenient visa policies so as to deepen education, science, culture, tourism and other cooperation so that 2,000-year-long cooperation and ties will be carried forward from generation to generation. Dear colleagues, the Chinese people say that grains of rice can fill a basket and drops of water can form a river. And the China also knows that the Central Asian people believe that united efforts can melt hard rock. I'm confident that as long as all of us continue to uphold the Shanghai spirit and take concerted and tireless efforts, we will upgrade SCO cooperation to a higher level and bring greater benefits to all the people. Thank you.